In Hawkins Falls, people say... When a girl calls a boy by a pet name, she's after his last name. Hawkins Falls, a television novel that tells the story of life in small town USA. Hawkins Falls is brought to you today by NBC. Look, let me call the marshal's office and see if anything is new. Oh, I know he'd call us as soon as he heard anything. Well, it'll only take 20 seconds. Oh, I wish you wouldn't tie up the line, Mitch. He might try to get through to us, or Floyd might call. But... Or Millie might have heard from him and call us here. Look through the desk again, would you, and see if you can find any cigarettes. I looked in every drawer, Mitch. Why don't you go over to the drugstore and get some? You can make your phone call from there. No, no, I'll wait. Something might break the second I walked out of here. It's almost dark. It's going to make it that much harder to find him now. Yeah. <laughs> Lona. Look, maybe we're on the wrong track. If Floyd had had a mild attack somewhere while he was driving the car, they'd have located him by now. It's been almost three hours. I'm sure the marshal and the state police have covered the entire area by this time. If he'd had an accident, they'd have found him. Yes, I suppose so. So maybe we can rule out the possibility that he's sick or hurt. Then where does that leave us? Well, look, I don't want to be poking around where I shouldn't, but will you tell me the truth? Well, of course, Mitch. When you wanted him to quit work for a while because of his health, how did it go? I mean, did you argue? Well, yes. At least that's as close to arguing as we've ever come. Would you call it a fight? I don't know. Perhaps with us it might be... Oh, no, Mitch, I see what you're getting at. It's not so. It's a possibility, Lona. Well, Floyd wouldn't run away like a petulant little boy. There's nothing little boyish about it. He knows he's not well enough to continue working. On top of that, he had an argument with you. This might have done it. Oh, no, no, Mitch. Well, what other answer is there, then? Lona, Floyd's a great guy and all that, but he's not so different from other guys. A man reaches a certain point, and he starts running from himself, his worries, from those he loves. He just has to run. The smart ones turn around and come back soon. It's as simple as that. And I know Floyd better than that. He just isn't constituted to run away from responsibility. Well, it's not especially running. Maybe he just got in the car and wanted to drive someplace and be alone. Look, let me call the marshal and have him extend this search. He ought to put out a bullet in the neighboring counties, at least. All right. Let me have the marshal, please. But if he's done what you say, you're right about this, Mitch. And what I have with Floyd isn't what I thought it was. Lona, don't say that. No, it's true. If he could be driven away by worry or work or me or anything, and. I'm all wrong about what we have to do. If you're still thinking about what to do, time is running out. The infection's getting worse and his breathing isn't as steady. He'll be all right. He's resting. When he wakes up, he'll be stronger. If he does wake up. What are you trying to do, scare me? Don't use that two-bit psychology on me. I'm not that dumb. No? Well, I wouldn't take any intelligence contests if I were you. What are you trying to do, crowd me, Doc? Why don't you stop making threats, Ryder? You know, I'm getting a little sick of you. This man is dying. He needs to get to a hospital. Maybe too late now, but at least he's entitled to that chance. Don't you think you'll make it? He had very little chance a few hours ago, but you've succeeded in giving him less. You'll have to take the gamble on running for it. Hold it! You know, I've missed a few very important appointments. I expect someone may be looking for me by now. Pretty soon they'll find my car in the garage, and then they'll start looking around here. Now, you'd better get out of here and let me try to get that man to a hospital. Maybe you're right. You know I am. 
I wish you had agreed to that a few hours ago. Okay. Take the best of care of him, will you? He's a good guy. He'll get the best of care no matter who he is. Easy, Millie. What's going on here? They're turning the town upside down looking for it. Like the doctor says, lady. Easy. These are the two men who robbed Halbert Cleve's store. The one over there is seriously wounded. This one was just about to leave. All right, go ahead, Ryder. Not now, I don't. If I left you alone with Kipley, you'd get him to a hospital. I have a few minutes head start. But with her, it's different. It's not different at all. Millie will stay here with me. She'll help me get him into the car, and we'll drive him straight to the hospital. You drop her off to call the cops. I give you my word, I won't call the police until after, after I've taken that man to the hospital. Now, that'll take at least 15 minutes. That's your head start. I have to wonder how good that word is. It's as good a word as you'll ever get. If he says it, he means it. You could only kept out of here one more minute, lady. I'm sorry, Floyd. I was staying at your house with the children. No one is at the office waiting to hear word from you. Roy wanted his football from out here. Pinky Weston stopped by and Roy wanted to make a trade with him. It's all right, Millie. Just as well I did offer to get it for him. I hate to have him step into this. Time is wasting, Ryder, and your friend hasn't got much of it left. I can't take the chance. It's dark outside. She could run to the cops and get help. I wouldn't even be able to see her for 50 feet. Listen, am I going to have to say the same words over again? You said them, Doc. Let me think. Can I do anything, Floyd? Can I help you with that man? Done all I possibly can here. You would have to come walking in here. Well, how could I have possibly known what was going on? Ten more minutes. Have you only waited? Oh, stop it, Ryder. Don't start trying to lay the blame on somebody else. Now, are you going to take my word that I won't call the police until I get to the hospital? You better make up your mind and do it now. You're just wasting time by this story. Ready. When I'm ready. You know, I'd even settle for chewing tobacco at this point, or, or gum. You don't have any gum in your purse, do you, Lone? I'm sure we'll hear something soon. Hi. This is a break. I was on my way over to your house when I saw you. Lona, would, would you do me a favor? Oh, uh, another course, time, sir. Betty. What's the matter? Well, haven't you heard? Well, if I knew what you were talking about, I'd tell you if I heard or not, but since Look, I don't know... have you got a cigarette? Don't use them. What's going on around here? Well, what can I do for you, Betty? Well, I have this date tonight. It's a special big date, you know what I mean? Or maybe you don't. I met this real nice fellow, Lona. Look, Betty, another time. Huh? What's eating you? It's all right, Mitch. Go ahead, Betty. You were saying... I have this extra special date tonight. This fella I met, I've gone out with him a few times and we get along real fine. So I asked him to dinner tonight, and what do you think? He says he'd like to bring his mother along, you know, to meet me. Sounds pretty encouraging, don't you think? Betty, please. Mitch, how come I'm so annoying to you? Uh, tell me, Betty, what can I do for you? Well, I wanted to make a real good impression at dinner tonight. Do you have any fancy tablecloths and things like that that I could borrow? Oh, of course, Betty. I tell you, why don't you just run over to the house? Millie Flagel is there, and she'll be glad to show you what I have. You just take whatever you like. Oh, thanks, Loni. You're, you're the most. And you're the least. I never saw you so grouchy before. Well, I guess the news hasn't gotten around to everybody yet. You should have let me stop her. Oh, no point in doing that. She was so enthused. Mitch, what could be taking so long? They sent out a description of Floyd's car. They should have found him by now, shouldn't they? Not so soon, Lona. There's a lot of road outside of Hawkins Falls. He didn't run away anywhere, Mitch. Please stop saying that. Well? Okay. I'll take your word for it. Now, get him to the hospital. All right. Help me get him to my garage and into the car. No, that's not the way we do it. You two go out. I can see the garage from here. I'll be looking out the window so I can see you drive away. Just in case you want to cross me. The doctor intends to keep his word. Nelly, we haven't got time to argue with him. Help me get this fellow out of here. Okay. Out the back way. 
I'll be looking through the window, lady. So don't get any ideas to run for the house and call the cops. I'll use this gun. I mean it. Millie Flagel. The kids at the house said she was here in the barn. I, I wanted to know where Lona kept her, her tablecloths. Tablecloths? Oh, brother, am I running into it today? Look, look, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, just let me out of here, will you? Shut up! I'll be running along. Okay, mister? Right to the nearest telephone. No, it ain't okay. Now sit down! What do you want from me? I want you to shut up. Do you have to handle that gun that way? Mister, guns scare me. Would you be careful, please? Look, I, I got this awful important fella coming to dinner tonight. He's bringing his mother along. And I just have to get back home and get dinner ready. Mister, I said I just have to if get... you want to be smart, you'll shut up. You get that? Sure. I want to be smart. We take you to Hawkins Falls each day, Monday through Friday, at this same time. Come with us tomorrow, won't you? Hawkins Falls is created by Doug Johnson, written by Bill Barrett, directed by Frank Pacelli, and produced by Ben Park. This program comes to you from Hawkins Falls by way of Chicago. This little reel of film right here is a 30 second commercial. It's half the reel, the 30 second commercial. Celluloid film strips. That's what you saw on tonight's show. These are the commercials I get. To make a one hour reel, this is one hour, heavy duty guy, of just commercials. Very few people know the history of the commercials themselves and when they were out. 3,000 commercials from Channel 5 were thrown into the garbage can. Duncan Hines, 1964, Prestone, Pepsi commercials, yes folks, Pepsi commercials, and a lot of commercials. I don't know what any of this stuff is. We have a warehouse of close to 30,000 commercials now. These were the commercials. Each one was a 60 or a 30 second commercial sent to the, the local stations. They would then take the commercial from the ad agency or the company. A 30 second or commercial would be edited into a film print. And then the film print would be shown live on the air. <gasps> oh, 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 oh. I always looked at myself as the Noah's Ark of collecting. I always wanted a little of everything. So what do you mean? You have newsreels? I'll take them. Castle films? I'll take them. Early TV shows? I'll take them. Commercials. Half hour commercials. Ooh, George Goble shows. Juvenile jury. The history of x-rays. Fats Waller. The Wild Bunch. Plumbing and heating division. Oh, man. My biggest problem is I own too much stuff, and it got out of hand. I used to be neat on a shelf. Oh, this blows. Now it's to the point where I can't even find some of the stuff I have. This just sucks.